Today I'm going to talk about discipline. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think many of us perhaps it's been a while since we heard that word. Yeah. <laughs> uh in school we had it a lot. Yes. <laughs> we need to be disciplined. Discipline. <laughs> when we were growing up as, as as children we heard it a lot because our parents really tried to push it and pound it in us. You mm. have to be disciplined. You really have to walk within a particular you know um you know root or you know um and i came across something so interesting that the word discipline and the word disciple actually come from the same root word we talk about uh, desiring to be disciples of jesus christ but the interesting thing is that we desire to be disciples but it's like this whole conversation of discipline we want to put it aside. Yeah. And the thing is that we cannot desire to be disciples without the attribute and the quality of being disciplined. Mm. And uh, I also came across a very interesting definition of discipline which is choosing what you want most over what you want now. Mm choosing what you want most over what you want now on a daily basis life presents us with an opportunity for two things to be able to hold on and get something bigger and better because we waited mm. or to get something that we want really now and forgo yeah. the value and the advantage of getting something bigger and better later on choosing what you want most of what you want now and most of us are in a place where we um, are presented with an opportunity of receiving something that is easy something that is gratifying us right now and something that meets a particular need right now and so what we do is that we forgo the value and we forgo the advantage of waiting and receiving something that is you know more prepared for us mm. um one of the things that you know paul talks about greatly he talks about athletes in the context of discipline and for me if you ask any kenya who is the most any kenyan who's the most well accomplished athlete um I, I think you will get many answers uh, you know uh, many of the answers you get is uh, you know Eliud Kipchoge mm. and yeah. and Eliud Kipchoge actually is uh, you know world renowned marathoner and he has uh, achieved a lot within that particular circle mm. in fact I, I think Eliud is more celebrated globally than he is yes. locally so I mean, true. the guy probably needs security in you know some of these cities in Europe and <laughs> the US yeah uh, because he's well accomplished. Yeah. Um, he said something very interesting about discipline. Uh, because I believe to be an athlete, you really need to be disciplined. Yes. He said, this is what Elliot Kipchoge said. He says, only the disciplined ones in life are free. Mm. Only the disciplined ones in life are free. Mm. If you are indisciplined, or if you are, if you are undisciplined, yeah. You are a slave to your mood and you are a slave to your passions. If you are indisciplined, you are a slave to your moods and you are a slave to your passions. Mm. Just think with me uh, yeah. for a couple of seconds here. Yes. That only the disciplined ones in life are free. Yeah. That if you are indisciplined, you are a slave. You know something about a slave is that they don't call a shot. Yes. They don't decide when to smile, they don't decide yeah. when to <laughs> when, yeah. when to laugh. But there's someone else. There's another factor. Mm. Uh, there's another party that is controlling them. Yeah. And so if you are indisciplined, you are you are a slave to your passions and you are a slave to your moods. Mm. What things are holding you captive this morning? what things are holding you back from the place of being truly free yeah. only the disciplined ones in life are free mm. 
um, having a conversations with uh, some friends of mine and uh, we arrived at the conclusion that constant success is primarily dependent on discipline yes yeah and and not merely motivation mm-hmm. so the thing about motivation is that it's uh, it's short lived yes uh, a good friend of mine was uh, telling us in this same uh, um, meeting that their daughter was having a problem with eating vegetables i guess like many other children yes <laughs> <laughs> so when you have to bribe them you have to talk them into it <laughs> and so the, the daughter decided to um to have a conversation with the parents and mm-hmm. say you know yeah. hey, listen guys yeah. why don't we do this why don't we have an agreement that for every meal of vegetables that i eat you give me a 50 bob hey. <laughs> and you know uh, Gen Alpha for you. Yeah. <laughs> the girl went online and she even downloaded a, a form, sort of like a contract, where yeah. even the parents would sign oh, and where, no. <laughs> and where oh she my. would sign <laughs> to make sure that this thing, yeah, you know, actually is uh, binding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and so, uh, by the time we're having co- conver- this conversation with my friend, mm. I think the girl had, uh, I think, about 900 bob. <laughs> I mean, our friend was telling us this girl is gulping on those vegetables. Boiled, (laughs) fried, you know, in all form and shapes. And for me, it's interesting what motivation can help you do, but here's the thing. We were telling each other that the day, you know, uh, this girl will discover that the parents actually don't have this money because because my friend was saying you know she's eating these vegetables i wish she knew that we don't have money to pay her because <laughs> her goal was buying a phone by december this year oh wow <laughs> oh that's a goal yeah that's a wow. couple of months ago <laughs> <laughs> and so my friend said the mo- the day she will discover yeah. that they do not even en- have enough money and their goal was just to put her in a place where she eats these vegetables yeah I'm sure the drive and the desire of these vegetables will drastically drop yeah. and she'll stop enjoying them and she will know that she's been enjoyed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Discipline versus motivation. Motivation is, divine, uh, is defined as, uh, you know, just the desire wi- or, or willingness to do something. Mm. And the root word for motivation is motive. Mm. Many of us put, a, put ourselves in a place where we say that I'll be motivated to read the word of God that I'll be motivated to live right, that mm-hmm. I'll be motivated to do this, I'll be motivated to do that. Yeah. And then we realize that because the root word for motivation is motive. Once a motive is pulled out of the picture, yeah. and then we do not then we do not have a reason to continue doing this. Mm. And so we are encouraged this morning to walk the path of discipline and not just primarily the path of motivation. Mm. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 to 27 puts it this way. Don't you realize that in a race everyone runs but only one person gets a prize. So run to win. Mm. And then he says all athletes are disciplined in their training they do it to win a prize that will fade away Mm. but we do it for an eternal prize so run with purpose in every step and then he says i'm not just shadow boxing verse 27 says i discipline my body like an athlete training it to do what it should Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself will be disqualified. Let's just unpack just a couple of verses this morning uh, because I strongly believe they speak uh, into the topic of the day. Mm. Let me tell you, children of God, I strongly believe that there are so many things that we are missing out because of being in discipline. There are so many things that God has ordained for us but the thing is that, you know, it probably looks at us and says, you know, what if I give my child or if I give my daughter this thing, it will destroy them mm. because they do not have what it takes to sustain them 
within that particular new space. So verse 24, this is what Paul says. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets a prize. Mm. And then he says, so run to win. I, I don't know, Barbara, you've yes. taken part in any of the marathons that happens within the city. We have tried. <laughs> <laughs> As a Paul Radio community. Yes, we have tried. Trying is good. <laughs> <It> is good. <laughs> but yeah. if you one day just uh, sat at the podium where you're seeing, uh, you know, people participate and take part in a marathon. Yeah. And especially, you know, when the gun goes off and everyone takes off and they are running. Yeah. You know, that, uh, you know, that initial first couple of meters or that first initial couple of minutes and couple of seconds mm. will tell you that these people are determined to make it. Yeah. Nobody came here to play. Because mm, so <laughs> they, they normally take off and everyone wants to position themselves because in the early yeah. part of the race, that's when you strategically position yourself. And then you have to make sure that you don't get injured or, or hurt because there's a lot of pushing and pulling. Mm. That picture presents to me the fact and the truth that People come to win mm. and they come to get a prize. Yeah. And that's why Paul says in verse 24, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets a prize. Yeah. And then he says, so run to win. The same, the same can be said about this journey of life. Yeah. Or oh, we are many of us in this marathon. Mm. We are many of us in this race. Yeah. But Paul presents to us a very interesting truth that we need to hear. Mm. That we, we should not just run, but we should run to win. Yeah. And the question that I want to ask us this morning is, what is our goal in life? Mm. What is our goal within our walk in faith? Mm. Do we run just to participate or do we, just, do we run to win? I've gotten a chance even to watch some of the, you know, global circuit marathon, whether it's yeah. Boston or New York. Mm. I'm hoping to take part in them one day. Oh, <laughs> or okay. Chicago or yeah. Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> some, some of these marathons actually have been reduced to a space of uh, exhibition. Yeah. People come dressed in a very interesting way. Mm. People come, you know, with a goal to pass across a certain message. Mm. People come with a goal to do different kind and manner of things. Yeah. It's, 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 it's interesting that some of these marathons, and especially the ones that attract a lot of global attention, have been reduced as a space of exhibition. Mm. For me, this tells me that within this journey of life, or within that particular marathon, is that there are people with different kinds of motives mm. and expectations. There are those who check in in that particular space to win, but there are those who check in that particular space to exhibit. Mm. Are you in the journey of life to win, or are you in this journey of life to exhibit? Are you in the journey of life, or in the journey of faith to win, or you in the journey of faith to exhibit mm. now depending on what uh, you know you are in the journey of faith or in the journey of life to do yeah uh, what you set as an expectation in essence will determine where you will end up in if you are in the journey of faith or in the journey of life to win mm. then there are some things that will be non-negotiable yeah. yeah the desire to walk right mm. the desire to live a disciplined life yeah. the desire to hear from god the desire to pray, the desire to be intentional in life will override many of these other things that we focus mm. and we and we do. Yeah. So Paul says, so run to win. And for me, what he was saying is that be intentional about winning yes. in everything you venture into. Mm. Be intentional about winning. Amen. That is what the word of the Lord declares who we are i mean that is what the word of the lord says about us he says that we are the head <laughs> mm. and we are yeah. not the tail yeah. so run to win verse, verse 24 don't you realize that in a race everyone runs but only one person gets a prize mm. so run to win 
this is what paul says in the in verse 35 he says all athletes are disciplined in their training yeah all athletes are disciplined in their training mm. we've been a chance also to watch a couple of clips and videos yeah of the training camps in Iten and in eldoret and some of the other spaces where athletes actually come together and mm. and you know they they prepare for marathons and they prepare for races yeah those guys wake up in the wee hours of the night. They have something in common with you, Barbara. Yes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> when you're waking up early <laughs> to come to the studios, yeah. those athletes are waking up early mm. to run, yeah. to train, to prepare. Yeah. You know, some of the you know um, environmental factors are not ideal. Mm. You know, at that particular time, those yes. spaces because of the high altitude, they are cold. Yeah you know and and sometimes more often than not it's raining it's yeah. um, mud mm. you know on the road you know it's interesting because some of these circuits that they participate in yeah. are well paved roads you know uh, and and you know they are this developed you know cities and nations mm. but if you look at the space where they train versus yeah. the space where they actually uh, go to compete they are two totally different spaces. Mm. All athletes are disciplined in their training. You see, we do not spend a lot of time focusing on the training regime for mm. these athletes. Yeah. But we focus a lot of time on the accolades and the successes that yeah. they achieve. It's true. Um, these guys train. You know, as I'm, I listened to some of them just have a conversation around what their training regime looks like yeah and some of them says that they they do even two to three marathons a oh. week what uh for context wow. purposes yeah. a marathon is 42 kilometers oh my i don't know how 42 kilometers looks like probably a yeah. little past thicker yeah oh you know and doing that within uh, a, sp a specific period of time yeah two hours what and a couple of minutes and so they make sure that at least on a weekly basis they participate in two or three marathons mm -hmm. just to make sure that their body is shaped wow. their body is aligned their body is in a space whereby it mm -hmm. can actually endure that run and even the environmental factors yeah all athletes are disciplined in their training mm. we don't focus on the training we want the we want the you know the the glamorous things mm. affiliated with success so i want to speak to us um this morning and tell us that we need to be disciplined in our training Amen. we need to be disciplined in our training mm. and there are so many spaces that the lord provides for us to train I'm reminded of scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 it says that all scripture is breathed by God and profitable for teaching mm. for reproof for correction and for training in righteousness mm. so that a man of God may be completely equipped for every good work Amen just taking time to read the scriptures is one of the ways that we train mm. uh, taking time to be in a space where we serve the lord is one of the ways how we train yeah. taking time to be in a place whether it's a small group or it's a church where we fellowship mm. and challenge each other taking up time to equip our souls you know in the presence of the lord uh you know to witness those are spaces which we train in mm. But the thing is that many of us are not in those spaces and we're wondering why we are not winning. Yeah. It's the same as athletes. That all athletes are disciplined in their training. And yes. that's what Paul says. Mm. And this is one of the reasons why they actually do well. Verse 26 says, So I run with purpose every step. Mm. So I run with purpose every step. Uh, this word purpose uh, is, is an interesting word. I think mm. many people, many pastors have made a um, ministry out of it. Yeah. Purpose-driven life, yes. purpose-driven church. Mm. Uh, Paul says something interesting. He says that I run with purpose in every step. Mm. 
running with purpose in every step Amen. and the question that i want to ask us this morning is are we intentional are we purposeful about how we are living our lives mm. are we intentional and are we purposeful about how we are working yeah. you know we pray and ask god give me a job mm. bless me with this opportunity yeah god says you know what i would want to but i think you will destroy it within mm. the first couple of <laughs> weeks yeah because you will not exercise intentionality mm -hmm. in how you you know in how you work yeah even the space of marriage are we intentional are we running with a purpose in every step within the space of marriage yeah we're saying yesterday that you know success is uh, success even within the marital space yes. is not uh, magical mm. if the grass in your neighbor you know in your neighbor's yard is green yeah probably you know you need to go back and work on yours yeah if you're running a business can verse 26 of um, of the scripture in the book of uh, you know first corinthians chapter 9 mm. apply to you or you say that god has blessed me with this business yeah that i am running with a purpose in every uh, you know in every step mm. Verse 27 puts it this way. He says that I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. I discipline my body like an athlete, mm. training it to do what it should do. Yeah. Do we discipline our bodies like athletes mm. or we let our bodies decide things for us? Because mm. mm. the thing is that... Um, if the whole purpose of sal of, of going to if all, the whole purpose of salvation was going to heaven some yeah. of us ask why are we still here battling with the flesh if the whole purpose of going to heaven was mm. for salvation was going to heaven yeah the pastors would be walking al uh, uh, along or uh, around mm -hmm. with guns oh. <laughs> so it's once you finish the prayer <laughs> They send you to heaven. They send you to heaven. <laughs> but why does the Lord leave us here on this earth to continue, you know, struggling with mm. you know these things that we struggle with on a daily basis? Yeah. It's because the Lord knows that He's already provided every required necessary mm. resource for us to do well. Yeah. And Paul presented uh, you know, one of the ways that we do this. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Mm. And the question that I want to ask us is, so how do we discipline our bodies? Or yeah. do we allow our bodies, you know, uh, to decide that this is the time to do this mm -hmm. and that this is the time to do that? Yeah. I like what Jesus says in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 8 and 9. Mm -hmm. It says, if your hand or your foot makes you sin, cut it off and throw it away. Mm -hmm. It is better for you to lose a part of your body and have eternal life then have two hands and two feet and be thrown into the fire that burns forever yeah. and he says that if your eye makes you sin take it out and throw it away mm -hmm. it is better for you to have one eye and, uh, and have eternal life than have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell mm -hmm. now before uh, we decide that I'm presenting a new gospel here that is <laughs> <laughs> You know prescribing decapitation yeah <laughs> that is not the goal mm. and unfortunately i think some of the some of the religions literally just took this thing and ran with it yes. there are some countries mm. where if you steal they cut off your hand mm. um, but i want to speak to us this morning about the things that prevent us from getting into the space that god has called and ordained us mm. <laughs> i have a friend of mine who uh, you know really struggled with social media yeah. and really struggled with you know, the things that actually come with it yeah. uh, you know in that particular space that's when you get to you know um, browse things that you probably should not be browsing mm. so the guy got to a place and said you know what I'm going to get rid of this smartphone mm. I'm going to buy a kabambe phone. oh my he said this is the way I'm going to discipline mm. my body I know that with this smartphone I'll be tempted to do one, two, three, four things. Is it when I walk around with this kabambe phone yeah. of mine? At least I know here I'm not browsing anything. Wow. <laughs> That's one wow. of the ways wow. that we 
you know yeah. cut off that hand mm -hmm. <laughs> that in essence puts you in a place where you will miss out eternity yeah for some of us this morning there are friends that you need to get rid of mm. there are communities that you've been hanging out with that are not doing you any good that are not putting you in the space of living this new life of discipline yeah. that you so greatly desire yeah. you know for some of us probably it's even the vocation that we are in yes yeah. Uh, and, and we really need to reflect and look at you know the value and the weight mm. of the space that we are in you know versus uh, you know where we desire to be I'm, I'm speaking to someone this morning who you have really been reflecting and thinking about ending a relationship mm. because you know for sure this relationship is not glorifying God and this relationship yeah. is pulling you back to the place of indiscipline to the mm -hmm. place of trouble and to the place of pain I want to encourage you this morning mm. as Jesus Christ said that if it is your hand or your eye will cause you to be in a space where you don't enter the kingdom of mm. heaven then you need to be in a space where you say you know what this morning I'm yeah. making a resolve I'm making a decision that I will end this relationship mm. that I will cut off these associations yeah. that I will <clears throat> get rid of this smartphone mm, yeah <laughs> and take up yeah. this kabambe mm. i know i know some friends who've even just gotten some sort of um software that uh, you know allow them <clears throat> uh, allow their friends or their spouses to see what they're actually browsing oh wow uh you know on yeah. on the internet meaning that discipline takes you know to be disciplined we actually to take we have to take drastic measures yeah uh, we have to take uh you know decision we have to make decisions yeah. that for us tell us and say that you know what mm. i'm actually not going down this path Amen. allow me to read the scriptures i bring uh, this devotion to a close yes, please. in the book of romans chapter 7 verse 15 to 25 you know what mm. paul was also in a similar space where he was battling and struggling and say that i desire to be in this path of discipline mm. and this is what he says in the new living translation i don't really understand myself mm. for what i want to do i don't really understand myself i want to do what is right mm. but i don't do it instead i do what i hate but if i know that but um, but if i know that what i am doing is wrong mm. this shows that I, I agree with the law. Uh, I agree with the law. Mm. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, allow me yes. to take it again. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, this, this shows that I agree that the law is good. Mm. So I'm not... Um, so I'm not the one doing wrong. Mm. It is sin living in me that does it. Verse 18 says, And, 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 and I know that nothing good lives in me. Mm. Uh, this is my sinful nature I want to do what is right but I can't mm. I want to do what is good but I don't mm. I don't want to do what is wrong but I do it anyway I want to um, I don't want to do what is wrong yeah. but I do it anyway yeah. but if I do what I don't want to do I'm not really the one doing wrong mm. it's a sin living in me it's normally called a do do and do not version yeah. <laughs> I mean scripture <laughs> but I like what he says towards the end he says that I've discovered this principle is yeah. li in life that when I want to do what is right I inevitably do what is wrong I love God's law with all my heart but there's another power within me mm. that is at war in my mind this power makes me a slave to that sin uh, that is still within me mm. oh what a miserable man I am who will free me uh, from this life that is dominated by sin and death mm -hmm. you know he first paints a picture like it's all gloom that i'm struggling that yeah. you know i'm trying to do this and i'm not trying to mm -hmm. and i'm not able to do but in verse 25 he gives us a solution he says thank god yeah. the answer is in christ our lord Amen. so you see how it is my mind uh, uh, so uh, so he says so so you see 
that in my mind I really want to obey God's law mm. but because of my sinful nature I am a slave to sin. He says the answer is in Jesus Christ. He says thank God. Yeah. That's how I put it. He says he says thank God. Mm. The answer is in Jesus Christ. Amen. The answer for us to live and walk a disciplined life mm. is in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Wow. What a powerful word and a timely word this morning. And uh, maybe somebody is listening to us and they're saying, you know what? Eh, Pass me. I'm struggling. <laughs> I am struggling. And um, maybe they really do want to get out of whatever space they're finding themselves. Maybe we can pray for such a person this morning as we um, just uh, wait upon more prayer requests. Kindly uh, remember you can send in your prayer request 0702969969 and we are going to pray together with you. Let us know if there's any area you're struggling with, especially when it comes to discipline. Let us know and we are going to just present your case before the Lord. Maybe Pastor, we can pray for the word and for such a person. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful. Mm. Indeed, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Mm. And Lord, we thank you for the words of Paul. Mm. Just alluding to the value of discipline. Yes. And he says that I discipline my body. Yeah. I discipline my body like an athlete. Mm. So that it ought to do what it should. Yes. And Lord, I know that I'm speaking to many people out there mm. who are struggling with this. Yeah. That there are things that they want to do, but they do not do them. Mm. We thank you because through the words of Paul, Lord, you've given us an answer. Mm. That thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ. Yes. And Lord, we know that many of us have been a space where we've tried to live right in our own strength mm. in our own resolve we talked about motivation a little earlier you know motivate ourselves to do what is mm. right and we know indeed that's not how it works yeah but we ought to put in ourselves in a place where we yield to the leading of the lord mm. where we yield to the leading of the holy spirit yes. and so lord i pray that this morning that you reach out to each and every one of us mm. who has a desire to live right, yes. to live and walk a disciplined life. But it's a battle, it's a struggle for them. Mm. I declare this morning that in Jesus' name, as David lifted up a prayer and said that I lift up my eyes to the hills, mm. from where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, mm. the maker of heaven and earth. Lord, I want to pray that in the name of Jesus, that will not that will stop looking around from where our answers are, mm. but we'll look up to you. Mm. We'll look into the scriptures. We'll look into the power and the help of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We're reminded that you say that you will not leave us as orphans, mm. but you will make available to us a helper, yes. the one who walks alongside us. Mm. And so this morning, Lord, I pray that we're opening ourselves up to the help of the Holy Spirit. Yes. We're putting aside, you know, that I know I can, I have a strategy. Mm. To I don't know, I need help. Yeah. Help me out, Holy Spirit. Yes. And as we make that confession, Lord, you're making that power available to us to walk right. Yes. We thank you and we honor you, God. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Pearl Radio. The home of fresh and classic hits.